the monetization strategy of rise of kingdoms is definitely one of the most controversial aspects of the game but what if i told you that government regulation could possibly change this in the future today we're going to discuss some information that came out just four days ago that's kind of been making its rounds throughout the gaming community and if these regulations do eventually get implemented then it will almost certainly have an effect on rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers i was gifted wine glasses for christmas so of course i had to try it out here in a video with obviously um it's definitely grape juice and if my eyes look like they're watering right now that's just because it's dry in here also if you did celebrate christmas merry christmas and with that out of the way let's just jump right into this article that was posted on Reuters. now this was actually mentioned to me by one of you who commented on my latest video and also i believe this link was sent to me by cuba's mike and a few people wanted me to talk about this so let's quickly go over it it says china announces rules to reduce spending on video games now what's important to note here is that the word announces is used so this is not something that is in effect right now it is not something that is guaranteed to happen but it is something that apparently the government is considering and has put a lot of thought and effort into so let's go ahead and go over this from hong kong on december 22nd chinese regulators announced on friday a wide range of rules aimed at curbing spending and rewards that encourage video games dealing a blow to the world's biggest games market which returned to growth this year the new rules which will effectively set spending limits for online games sparked panic among investors wiping off nearly 80 billion dollars in market value from china's two big Biggest gaming companies as investors sought to gauge the potential impact on earnings and more restrictions in the offing and just to be clear here if the rules that we're going to talk about in this video get implemented they will absolutely reduce the amount of money that some of these companies make whether it's a company in china the united states that has a game in china whatever it is this will affect the bottom line no doubt unless these companies get really creative with new and effective monetization strategies okay online games will now be banned from giving players rewards if they log in every day if they spend on the game for the first time or if they spend several times on the game consecutively all are common incentive mechanisms in online games does any of this sound familiar to you in rise of kingdoms if not it should because literally all of these things are present in rise of kingdoms so first of all log in every day okay well we already have that in the supply depot you are already rewarded for logging in every day if you make a 30-day gem supply purchase okay so what this rule is saying is that it'll i guess effectively be illegal to sell a daily login incentive so literally everything that you're looking at here on the screen gone goodbye the second point is if they spend on the game for the first time now i don't know about you but this surely looks like a first purchase reward and in fact that is the case anytime in rise of kingdoms if you make your first purchase it doesn't matter what it is you are guaranteed to unlock minamoto everybody knows this and that's why free to play players will always have the minamoto logo in the top right corner and finally if they spend several times on the game consecutively well that just sounds like recharge rewards in fact that is literally the words that rise of kingdoms uses in the game recharge 2500 gems every day to receive a bonus chest so this event literally is built to reward you for purchasing consecutively in the game and also it's consecutive purchases daily okay so this kind of breaks two rules all in one but anyway the article goes on to say all of these are common incentive mechanisms in online games very true and i want to make it very clear that these are not exclusive to rise of kingdoms these methods are basically present in literally every single game i mean a battle pass is almost like you typically get a login reward if you have a battle pass you log in and you get some sort of progress towards it or something now that's pushing the envelope a little bit i know that that's not exactly the same same thing but just to be clear like rise of kingdoms is not the only player here rise of kingdoms is doing the same thing that the rest of the market is doing okay and it seems to be working out shares in tencent holdings the world's largest gaming company tumbled as much as 16 percent at one point while those of its closest rival netease plunged as much as 25 percent after the national press and publication administrations published the new draft rules so they are already drafting this it's not like they're just throwing this idea out there willy-nilly like they're getting ready for this like this probably will happen in some 
form or fashion now it might not and they may change these things pretty dramatically before it happens but like they're gearing up for some more regulation shares of tech investor process followed 10 cent lower losing 14.2 percent in early trade on Friday and were among the biggest fallers on the pan-european stock index process owns a 26 percent stake in Tencent. So this is going to affect a lot of different companies in the market. Quote, it's not necessarily the regulation itself. It's the policy risk that's too high, said Stephen Leung, executive director of institutional sales at broker UOB K Hian in Hong Kong. Sorry if I pronounce any of that incorrectly. People had thought this kind of risk should have been over and had started to look at fundamentals again. It hurts confidence a lot. So basically what they're saying here is that, look, like we can adapt the way that we monetize these games. The problem is that they keep putting new regulations out and that's really what hurts the confidence in companies like Tencent and NetEase because they're going to continue, you know, as companies that I believe are located in China, they have the HK for Hong Kong. I, the, I'm pretty confident these are both primarily located in China. These two companies will continue to have to, you know, wrestle with these new regulations. And basically what he's saying here is that this might not be the end of it. There could be more regulations that happen a year from now or two years from now or six months from now. It could be anything, right? They kind of do this. They drop this out of nowhere. And that's really what they're saying. The problem is when asked about the draft rules impact, Tencent Games' vice president Vigo Zhang said Tencent will not need to fundamentally change its reasonable business model or operations for games, adding that the company has been strictly implementing regulatory requirements. So uh, that's a bit of an optimistic statement, okay? Uh, Tencent has its hands in many different video games. They own part of, I believe, Fortnite, for example, right? So like th this is a big company and that is very ambitious of them to say. I think they will absolutely need to change the monetization strategy of many video games in their catalog but we'll have to see zhang added that miners had been spending a historically low level of money and time on 10 cents games since 2021 when minor protection became a focus for beijing this is very true they if i remember correctly and please understand that i live in the united states so i don't have a first-hand experience with what gaming is like in Beijing or China or Hong Kong or anything like that. So please excuse me for my potential ignorance here. Okay. But I believe that there was a, a regulation that came into place for miners in China back in 2021 that limited the amount of hours that they can spend playing video games. I think both on weekdays and even on weekends, it was some sort of hourly limit. Okay. So they're basically saying like, look, we've followed those regulations. We'll continue to follow these regulations. And honestly, we've already seen a reduction since 2021. I guess that's what he's trying to say. NetEase declined to comment. Beijing has become increasingly tough on video games over the years in 2021. Okay, here we go. China set strict playtime limits for under 18s and suspended approvals of new video games for about eight months citing gaming addiction concerns now that last part I feel like is also critical here because back in 2021 and in 2022 when the makers of rise of kingdoms were working on call of dragons right because remember call of dragons came out at the beginning of 2023 which means they were probably working on it throughout 2022 and I suspect perhaps it started or at least the idea phase started in 2021 but regardless Lilith Games as a company based in China right they are very aware of the regulations that were happening in 2021 and when there was an eight month pause on the approval of new game publications I suspect that that was part of the reason why Call of Dragons was released under far light games okay and if you guys don't know back in April of 2022 Lilith launched the publishing brand far light games okay so this article says that in 2021 China had a basically an eight month a period of time where they suspended approvals of new video games so by that time Lilith responded effectively by just launching a new publisher in a different country Farlight Games is strategically located in Singapore which I believe as far as I know has decent relations or decent relationship with China but also has a decent relationship with other countries like the United States and so Singapore is kind of like a good place to be if what you want to do is release games for the world okay release them every everywhere you want to put them in China because there's a big market there and it's growing crazy you also want to put it in the United States because people here spend money on mobile games it just is what it is it makes business sense to launch your games globally and put them everywhere like why not right so it seems to me like this 2021 regulation 
is why call of dragons came out under farlight games instead of under lilith games okay that's my uh, i suspect that that's the case and i to be honest with you guys i would not be surprised if we see some sort of like lilith games sells rise of kingdoms to farlight like that would be hilarious right or lilith games gives away publishing rights of rise of kingdoms to farlight games i i feel like we might see that happen in the future i don't know the legal aspects of all that that might not happen but you know that would not surprise me in the slightest okay we could be booting up rise of kingdoms next year and see the farlight like games logo and still a lilith and that could just be the way that it is right anyway the article goes on to say although the crackdown formally ended last year with the resumption of new game approvals regulators have continued to impose restrictions to curb in-game spending the new rules revealed on friday are the most explicit yet aimed at curbing in-game spending besides banning reward features games are also required to set limits on how much players can top up their digital wallets for in-game spending so literally a cap like you literally will not be able to spend more than a certain amount out. that's actually insane when we consider that some players in rise of kingdoms have spent a million dollars a year for the past couple of years okay and you know for sure that that cap is going to be lower than a million that's that's for sure okay the removal of these incentives is likely to reduce daily active users it will definitely not likely it absolutely will the reason that these methods are in the game to begin with is to increase daily active users and in-app revenue and could eventually force publishers to fundamentally overhaul their game design and monetization strategies said Ivan Sue an analyst at Morningstar yes this is again very generous wording here these regulations that they're discussing are a literal direct attack at the most effective ways that these mobile games make money and literally putting a limit on how much they can spend so this will absolutely change the monetization strategy no question games are also banned from offering probability based lucky draw features to miners and from enabling the speculation and auction of virtual gaming items so here we see a another massive change because this is literally going to change how players use the well i can't show it here because i don't have it up yet but the wheel of fortune feature right the wheel of fortune is literally a gambling mechanic you literally spin a wheel i mean it's literally based on a, a gambling system right and if that's the case if what this article is saying is true then I mean there's no there's literally an event even if we don't even look at, at the wheel of fortune there's literally an event in rise of kingdoms called team draw like it's literally it is literally a lucky draw event so that is just like nail in the coffin to those types of events okay this says it bans it from miners so either one thing happens right either rise of kingdoms is banned from miners like no miners can play it that's anyone under the age of 18 in china or they just remove those types of events and make them not probability based i mean either way that's a massive blow to the game but the new rules included a proposal that is widely expected to be welcomed by the industry requiring regulators to process game approvals within 60 days okay so no more eight month wait time for new game releases or, or approvals okay now it'll be 60 days that's great okay meanwhile chinese regulators announced on the same day licenses for 40 new imported games for domestic releases and that is that's great okay great love that the new rules also reflect beijing's concerns over user data requiring game publishers to store the their servers within China okay so that's really interesting so if we have something like Farlight Games based in Singapore then is it possible that China says okay great you can publish Call of Dragons and again this is all speculation I have no affiliation by the way this is just my own personal thing but could it be possible that the Chinese government says okay great you can publish Call of Dragons in China as a company based in Singapore but the user data from those Chinese consumers or players or whatever has to be stored in China. And that would be the same thing for like, let's say, I don't know, is Call of Duty Mobile available in China? I have no idea. Okay. But let's say Call of Duty Mobile comes to China, then perhaps the data of the Chinese users has to be stored in China as well. Could be really interesting stuff there. The administration is seeking public comment on the rules through January 22nd, 2024. So that means that we have less than a month worth of public comment on these changes before they consider just implementing them so that's crazy that is a tight timeline for these 
for the public comments here okay as a result of Beijing's crackdown on gaming in 2021 2022 is the Chinese gaming industry's most difficult year on record as total revenue shrank for the first time and like look things aren't going to grow forever it, it is what it is China's video game market returned to growth this year as domestic revenue rose 13 percent to 303 billion yuan great 46.2 billion dollars according to industry association okay great the harsh draft rule also casts a shadow on gaming stocks globally u.s gaming stocks roblox electronic arts and unity software slipped between 1.7 and 3.1 percent on friday while in europe we have ubisoft down more than three percent now let's be real i don't know if this is necessarily a direct causation surely that has something to do with it but like unity has been shooting themselves in the foot all year so like it is what it is same thing with ea for example ea there's like a million reasons why ea would be down right now roblox literally all their software comes from children developing it for free like i mean let's be real there's tons of reasons why these companies companies should be down okay but yes there is no doubt in my mind that these regulations not only will affect rise of kingdoms in in a big way but of course the entire industry now the question is you know if these changes come into play as they're presented here in the draft form how does that affect rise of kingdoms globally now I suspect that this will not affect anyone outside of China so in the united states for example we'll probably see the same monetization strategies and events that we've always seen unless it somehow interferes with china okay if it does then they'll, they'll have to change it but my expectation is that these rules and regulations what china cares about is chinese people and of course they do that's i mean they're the that's the government of their people of course they care primarily about Chinese people why wouldn't they right like every government cares about their own people so I suspect that if these get implemented the rules will be that this only will be required for Chinese users they they won't care what other users in uh, experience right so what I suspect will likely be the case is that the international version of rise of kingdoms where most servers are we probably won't see much of a change even if these regulations do come into play but of course the players in China who you know I don't know how many of them are even watching my channel right now but uh they probably will notice a significant change to how the game is monetized and I think that's for the best I mean let's be real I actually think that these regulations I mean they're good regulations that's what I think I actually think that these this is a great idea they should do this in every country throughout the world that's my opinion and look I'm the type of person to spend money on this game I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars over the years on rise of kingdoms and honestly I think that it's completely fine to spend what you find appropriate on your entertainment right so you know it's fine if you want to spend fifty thousand dollars in rise of kingdoms hundred thousand dollars in rise of kingdoms good for you if you can afford to do that that's fine if you find that you're getting value out of the service that rise of kingdoms is providing that's fine again rise of kingdoms I just want to be clear here they are providing you a service you are not buying anything you don't own in case you guys didn't you know you got to read the terms of service you don't own your account you don't own your commanders you don't even own your gems you don't own your resources you own nothing and you never have and it can be taken away whenever so just keep that in mind okay you literally don't own your account like literally you do not own it so just let me put that out there they're providing you a service and if you feel like that service is worth tens of thousands of dollars then that's great spend whatever you want I've done that I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars in rise of kingdoms I find this game very fun very entertaining I get a tremendous amount of entertainment value out of the game and therefore for me personally I feel like what I've spent on the game you know it's worth it okay it's worth it have I spent too much probably but you know it is what it is over the course of a year people will spend thousands of dollars at bars getting drinks that's not required it's just entertainment it's something to do for fun socialization whatever some people spend thousands of dollars on going to the movies right movie tickets candy popcorn soda like those are not required that's all part of the entertainment experience so really like people spend on entertainment regardless it's not just video games but the point that I'm making here is that even somebody like me who participates financially in this system in this monetization structure even i think that these regulations are good for games okay it is not good that you can spend an infinite amount of money on rise of kingdoms it's not because then there is an incentive to give you more things to spend your money on and that's how we have 14 systems in rise of kingdoms which i think is a bad thing okay now do i think daily login rewards should be illegal no I don't I don't think that it should be that bad but like for example a cap on spending 
I think that's completely fine. I think that these games, not just Rise of Kingdoms, most many, I'll say many video games in 2023 use gambling like structures to get players to spend money on their game. We can go back to the Wheel of Fortune again as an example. OK, it is literally a gambling mechanic in the video game, and this is not a gambling video game per se. It's technically a war strategy game where you collect different things but the means by which you collect things happen to often be associated with gambling mechanics like the golden keys in the tavern completely randomized system crystal keys are random getting talents on equipment has a randomized aspect to it getting your armaments well that entire that entire system is just a whole slot machine okay they're trying to make it better with some updating uh, uh with some updates that are coming but effectively a lot of these systems are gambling adjacent okay it's not exactly gambling but it's gambling adjacent okay and i think that if they're going to use those strategies to make money I don't see why there shouldn't be some regulation to protect the consumer. We already have dozens, if not hundreds, possibly uh, of laws, at least in the United States on gambling. Okay. We have tons of rules and regulations surrounding gambling as it relates to not just minors, but also for adults, different ways that casinos can word things and how they can advertise things and all this other stuff. And that is because it protects the consumer because these tactics are extremely effective and they're very predatory they take advantage of people's psychological states they manipulate people psychologically this is all documented this is not my opinion this is literally facts as to why i mean that why else would somebody ruin their life over gambling right like it's because it's a powerful effect on some people so if mobile games are going to use these types of strategies fine but I also think that they should have a similar amount of regulations to protect the consumer. I think that's completely fair, especially because kids can literally download these games on their phone and have access to them immediately. There's nothing stopping a child from playing rise of kingdoms, at least in the United States right now. And again, I don't think this is as bad as gambling, but it's really close. It's like, I would say 80% there, or maybe 50% there. Like it's really bad. Actual gambling has a whole other layer of psychological effects where you know if you lose money you want to gamble again to chase that money back whereas in rise of kingdoms for example you're just spending your money on the service it is what it is there's also some guaranteed you know you have some pity systems and stuff like that so it's it's not quite as bad as gambling but it's close and i think that we should have a similar amount of regulation of games like this therefore I am a pretty strong believer in these regulations I think this is great now there is going to be a downside of this and that is that game companies are going to be shot in the head okay small game companies will go out of business for this and large game companies will take a 16 or 25 percent loss in market value overnight okay now I'm sure these will recover at some point and let's be real they probably will Tencent owns a lot okay but like they will lose a lot of money and that means that they're going to spend less on on marketing that means they're going to spend less on advertising that means that they're going to release fewer games they're going to have there's going to be less content to come out okay and there's just going to be less money in the industry as a whole okay and so that will have a negative effect on some of the games that you and i know and love and maybe it could even affect rise of kingdoms the uh, the flip side of that is that there could potentially be fewer predatory monetization strategies implemented into games like rise of kingdoms and also the games will have to be better to compete for players attention okay because a lot like as the article stated a lot of these mechanisms are only in the game to get players to log in and be, you know kind of buy into the ecosystem of that live service game if there are fewer of these strategies that games can implement to hook in that player then the player will have more agency to kind of play around and play different games and not feel so bad about not playing a particular game on any given day and therefore games will have to try harder to release good content to compete with the rest of the market and that is a massive w for gamers because first of all a better a monetization strategy most likely okay they could release something else that's even more predatory that's possible right like they could just say okay all new commanders are 10 grand and then okay well that's not gambling it's just literally you you can't buy unless you're a giga whale okay so like they could just do that that would suck right but like there are some pros to the current system let me just be real but if games have to work harder to earn your trust and earn your play time okay then that's good for the consumer competition is often good 
for consumers. I'm not going to say always because like, you know, not always true, but you know, it is often the case that competition breeds excellence. So they say, so I'm curious to see how this is going to change things. It could change the rise of kingdoms dramatically. It could change the entire gaming industry dramatically, or it could just change things in China. And us here in the United States will notice literally nothing different. Either way, I would love to know what you guys think about this in the comments section below. The reason I'm making this is to have a discussion with you guys, because some of you wanted me to talk about it. Do you think these regulations would be a net positive or net negative on the gaming industry? I'm curious as to what you guys think while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton. It'll push this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.